we say goodbye to a great man. Rest in peace, David Rawson. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind. But now I see Was grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious Shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Happy Thursday morning, everybody. Today is a very, very special Thursday. For years, as my year ended, I had Speaker of the House David Ralston as my guest the last show of the year. That was the way I started things to end the year and to begin a positive note on the next year. And last year, sadly, as I began counting people I loved and lost, David Ralston was among those that I loved and lost. And I kept thinking, how will I do this? Who will I replace him with? How can I possibly do this? And so I went to Rick Jaspers and I said, Rick, I need you to come and do the show. I need you to take over. But I looked at him live on the air and I said, but you could never fill his shoes. <clears throat> well, I know somebody who can fill his shoes. And today um, we are going to talk about the accomplishments, the great things that were done by David Ralston with the help and the amazing support of his beautiful wife, Cherie. And so today, please welcome my friend and my co-host today, Cherie <laughs> Ralston. We're here today to talk about the wonderful things in the state of Georgia and um, a lot of good to talk about, mm -hmm. a lot of positive things, but still much more to be done. Now, you know that my daughter committed suicide and you know what mental health means to you as yes. a person. Can you talk a little bit about the, the program and the things that y'all accomplished on that? Well, that was important to me because I, I have a nephew who what his first stay in a mental institution was at age eight. Wow, eight years old? Eight years old. Oh my gosh. And that's when I knew, you know, we tried everything to get help for him. And uh -huh. that's when I knew that that something had to be done. Right, right. Um, So we started last year working on mental health reform. Mm -hmm. uh, David put a committee together and they spent endless hours uh, studying the situation, talking about the situation, and trying to, to 
come to a solution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you know, any bill is just a beginning. Wow. Um, and that's the thing is someone authors that bill and it goes um, to the floor in, in the House mm -hmm. and then it'll go to the Senate and mm -hmm. the Senate will make edits and then it'll come back to the House. So we ended up with a pretty good bill. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. very proud of it. Yeah, yeah. I, so. I watched that and I was so excited. And you don't know this, but I know people who worked in the mental health industry for 17 years, planned on making it a career. And when the when the budget cuts hit mental health worse than anything in Georgia, and that was about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. they took a huge, huge hit. And I don't know why they chose to cut mental health. Why would they mm -hmm. cut one of the most important programs in the state? Mm -hmm. But somebody, and I can't even remember who was governor then, but they did this huge cut and a lot of people were laid off and many of them, one of them had been there I think 19 years. Mm -hmm. But these people had put their heart and soul into helping others mm -hmm. and then their jobs were lost. Right. And, and you know when the funding is gone and there's nowhere to do that, you don't ever fulfill your dream of helping others. Mm -hmm. And that's what the mental health the, the whole thing is helping somebody else. That's it. Helping somebody else who is facing something that maybe, you know, I mean, we know what my daughter went through. We know what my daughter now is going through counseling because for the 10 years after her sister died, my daughter hasn't been able to handle it. Mm -hmm. So it takes a counselor. It takes mm -hmm. funding to do that. Yes. Now, is the funding going to be in place at the beginning of this year? Because we want to start today, let's talk about the positive things of 2023. Mm -hmm. Let's make it a total positive, positive year. Yes, those funds will be available this year. Mm -hmm. They will. Um, and you know, this bill is pro-family, it's pro taxpayer mm -hmm. and it's pro law enforcement so it's a great bill oh that's awesome that's awesome now do you have to be on medicaid to be able to receive because mm -hmm. like with my daughter getting counseling she's not eligible for medicaid so do you have to have private insurance how do you do that no private insurance will cover um will cover the treatment and you'll go into the hospital someone that's in a mental health crisis mm -hmm. will go into the hospital and they'll be treated just as any other, it, it's any other medical condition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's not always been that way. Right. So it's almost like someone who goes in um, with a heart condition, mm -hmm. that, you know, they are treated right there. They are not shuffled to a different facility. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's the way this will work. Right. Do you remember when we had Milledgeville I do. And people used to be sent to Milledgeville and they would be shocked and they would have their brains. Mm -hmm. I mean, crazy things were happening. But Milledgeville was the only answer for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was the correct answer. Mm -hmm. I think that now, I think we've learned a lot about mental illness and it's often something that your brain is not, there's a short in your brain. It's not that you decide you want to be mentally ill. Something happens. It's a chemical imbalance. It's a chemical imbalance. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And people didn't understand that. And and I'm I'm a I'm a bad one to talk because I used to say, Oh, you're depressed, just suck it up and get over it. No. Mm -hmm. Depression is real. Mm -hmm. Depression is real. And and if you can't handle it and you go to that dark place, often suicides happen. Mm -hmm. And then the family forever, what could I have done? What could I have done now? Y'all have it so that Georgia Georgia families can help their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. I can remember a picture of y'all standing at the Capitol steps and, and when y'all were announced and all this. And so many families were just, it was making, and they said, this makes a difference in our life. This gives us our loved one back. This gives us an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and that's what it was all about for, for David and I. Uh, it started out as a Sunday morning cup of coffee. And mm -hmm. we, we started talking, as we always did, about legislation and uh, the mental, a discussion about mental health uh, came up. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, why can't we fix this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you are the Speaker of the House. Yeah. Why yeah. can we not fix this? Yeah, yeah. And um, so, and, and he said later on that I'm the person who asks him the hard questions. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what I'll do at the Capitol, mm -hmm. is I will ask the hard questions. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to ask the mm -hmm. hard questions. You know, you didn't know this, but after I visited with you at the funeral home, I was hugging you and you felt like a little shell. I was like, 
I want to save her, I want to help her, I want to do what, and then I left the funeral home and I was feeling sorry for Georgia because I said, who will fill his shoes? Who will fill his shoes? Well, that night I called somebody and I said, I know who could fill his shoes, but I don't know if she'll want that job <laughs> or not. And within three days, you made, I'm getting cold chills thinking about it because I was worried about the state of Georgia. I was worried about North Georgia in particular because I know what these mountains mean to you mm -hmm. as they did to him. Mm -hmm. And I said, I mean, I made so many phone calls and I said, we got to find out what we're going to do. We got to figure out who, who could, who could we get to run? Who could we possibly get to run? And everybody said the same thing. Well, Cherie, of course, because she was there doing everything with him. And I said, oh my gosh, I remember being a 50 year old widow. I remember having to walk in and run the company without my husband. I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I could, and I did it. And and our our actually our volume of business grew the next year. It doubled. So maybe you'll do twice mm -hmm. as much to help other people because now you're a young widow. You're yes. a young widow. Yeah. You know we don't always get an opportunity to choose the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we have to make decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm broken hearted. Mm -hmm. I know. I just buried the love of my life. I know. But I stand before you today um, with all the good intentions in the world. Mm -hmm. I just want to help our community. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had someone say the other day, well, what is your ad agenda? I don't have an agenda. No, no. I just want to do great things for our yep. community. Yep. I want to continue the legacy of my husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he did fabulous things for us. Oh, I, I, I've got a list in my brain. <laughs> I know so many things. And every time you talk to somebody about it, they will say, you didn't know that he did this for me, but he did. You didn't know that he helped me with this. You didn't know that he gave me advice for this. That's what he did. Mm -hmm. and, and you were there and mm -hmm. you saw it and you know how to pick up the ball and run with it. So as, as a legislator, a lot of what you do is constituent services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, sure, you have to read, read the legislation and, and vote on the legislation, but a lot of what you do is constituent services. Right. And I've been doing that right. all of these years. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, more than one time, you will have heard someone say that he said, just call Cherie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, she'll mm -hmm. get in. She'll get in touch with the right person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. um, so I've been doing this job. Yeah. And selfishly, when I was saying that day, as I'm in my car leaving the funeral home, I said, "What are we going to do? We need her. We need her." But I never thought about putting the burden on you. And you don't see it as a burden at all. You Not see at it all. as an opportunity. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. To carry on the tradition that was started. Yes. It makes sense. It just makes sense. Yes. Now I have a question for you, and we've never talked about this before, but why couldn't you have been appointed to finish his term? I'm not exactly sure. Somebody <laughs> told me there was a time frame in there that if, it, if he had been re-elected two months earlier, there, there's this time frame mm -hmm. that you would have been appointed. I don't know the And answer. I feel sure our governor would have appointed mm -hmm. you. I have no doubt. Yes. So. He's endorsed me. Right. Uh, governor Kemp has. Um, former Governor Deal uh, has endorsed me, mm -hmm. Representative Will, Will Wade has mm -hmm. endorsed me, mm -hmm. and they all know that I'm the person for this job. Right. And right. I'm so grateful. But they saw the work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. And, and you haven't stopped loving the mountains in North Georgia oh. just because you lost David. I mean, no. that's like, it, it has to be more passionate for mm -hmm. you now than ever. Mm -hmm because you can finish the things that he started. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that your sweet husband loved was the technical schools of Georgia. Yes. That was so important to him. Yes. And a big deal for you now. It is. You know, especially in our area, we, we need um, nurses and mm -hmm. we need CNAs and we need uh, HVAC installers and builders mm -hmm. and so technical schools are a great place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for those who don't want to go to college and, right. and and that's fine. That's it. I didn't want to go to college so I went to Apple to it was in Pickens Tech and took the real estate course mm -hmm. and 35 mm -hmm. years later I'm still selling a whole lot of real estate and it's because my counselor at high school said you're not college material, you'll get bored to death. You'll be wanting to teach the class, so it's better for you to do something else. I said, I agree, <laughs> I agree. Now you will be the teacher. You will be, you will be teaching North Georgia how to, 
number one, join you and to to come on board and know that you can accomplish because you have accomplished. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that he asked you to do you weren't able to pull off. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. You worked as a team. We, d we were a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have, because we were a team, I have relationships in Atlanta mm -hmm. that it takes my heart and soul is right here in North Georgia, mm -hmm. but it takes those relationships to make things happen there. Right, right. And that's what it's all about, is making things happen for North Georgia for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I knew, when she knew where to take people to eat in Atlanta, that this job is for her. <laughs> you know that you take people to Mary Max Tea Room. I do. Because that's as close <laughs> to North Georgia eating and cooking as you can ever get. And yep. I grew up right down there by it, and I said, it's so cool. Mm -hmm. We took a limo down there one day with about 12 of us, and the limo did fine delivering us to Mary Max. We went and ate, we got in the limo, and it, the suspension belt went down on it because we'd eaten so much. <laughs> but, but you know the ins and outs of the working of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. You know you know mm -hmm. what it's going to take to continue this great job. And, and to, you know, the legacy can survive. Mm -hmm. It can survive, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know it takes um, some navigation and some finesse to work around um, to work around under the gold, the gold dome. Oh, yeah. And I've been, I've watched and learned that. I learned mm -hmm. from the best. Oh yes, yeah, you did. How to do those things. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Well, he was so funny. He didn't even know this, but the last time he came to do the show, he was like 55 minutes late. Well, we're live TV, so for 55 minutes, I'm doing 55 minutes without my guest, and I'm like, okay. So he gets here, and then we do an hour over because I had carried the show for an hour. You can carry the show that he was doing. You can carry on the job that he was doing. He was running late. He came in. He apologized. His driver apologized. They said we got stuck in traffic. We had some stuff going on at the Capitol. You've seen that, and mm -hmm. you've been there where he had to make exception to something, mm -hmm. and you pick up and you go, and yes. you do it. You do it. Yes. You, uh, there are times when um, you just have to do the very best you can do mm -hmm. to, to be where you need to be. Right. Right. Uh, and, and you know how that traffic is. Yes, I do. I do. I told her, I said, I was smarter than most. I fled Atlanta 52 mm -hmm. years ago because I couldn't stand the, the crime of the city and all that kind of stuff. And that's something, the things that are most important to me living in these mountains, I live in Cherokee County now, and I can't even vote for you. Isn't that sad? <laughs> but, but, um, but I know that safety is important. I know that a place for our children to play is important. I know that schools are important, and we happen to have some great schools. You know, we have some great schools in our area. We have teachers who love doing what they do. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that are important, and as a realtor, I know when people come here, they want a good education for their children, they want to feel safe, they don't mm -hmm. want to be at their job and worry, is my child gonna be safe getting off the school bus, or are they gonna be abducted? That's and those right. are things that these the mountains offer that. Mm -hmm. They offer all of that. Yes, yes. And those things are the things that will be my priorities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, uh, uh, a good education for our children so they can stay here mm -hmm. and, and raise their families here. Right. Um, it's very important to me that my grandchildren live right here mm -hmm. in Gilmer County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I raised my family here. My grandchildren live here and go to school here, mm -hmm. uh, play sports here. So those things are very important. Very important, very important. Now, when you, when you win and you hit the floor running and you're gonna go to work, um, we know mental health, but, but one of the most important things to my heart is taking care of the aging. Mm -hmm. And the seniors, there seems to be a ball drop there too. I told you a story about somebody I've been taking care of. There are no funds available because we haven't gotten her on Medicaid yet. Her Medicare wouldn't cover what we needed. And um, for seniors, that has to be a priority because mm -hmm. the population, I'm getting older. Somebody asked how old I was the other day and I thought the nerve of you. I told you I was 59 <laughs> again and again and again and again. <laughs> but, but the senior population is growing. And a lot of those seniors have moved to Fannin, Gilmer, mm -hmm. Dawson counties. They mm -hmm. retired here. Is that something that you're gonna have to work hard with? I am. Um, right now, staffing is, um, they are really, really, the facilities, nursing homes, mm -hmm. um, assisted living facilities, they are struggling with staffing issues. Mm -hmm. And what happens is they can hire, hire staff, but 
the staff can go to an agency and make double the money. Mm -hmm. So then that facility has to call the agency mm -hmm. to, to, to have that staff come in. Mm -hmm. Also, reimbursement right now is um, we are saying terrible. That. Yes, it's yes. terrible. Yeah, yeah. So I do know that the governor um, put into the budget a, a massive amount of money for for nursing facilities mm -hmm. this, into the future. This this budget this year, so it'll mm -hmm. have to be voted in, on. But he he did include that in the new budget. Mm -hmm. And I think it's probably number one on my list for what's important as we age mm -hmm. because we all thought we had enough money to make it mm -hmm. and then the cost of living went up. Mm -hmm. Now that's something that we have to address. You know, mm -hmm. the cost of living, Gilmer County loves me because they have the cheapest gas anywhere. And I go out here on Boardtown Road and I fill up three times a week, Ooh. three times a week. I drive more than anybody in the history, of, but, but I've got real estate in all different areas. And so I, I try to get my gas here in Gilmer County. If I get it in Cherokee County, it costs me 20 cents a gallon more. Oh. And when you're buying 30, 32 gallons at a time, there you go, you know. Mm -hmm. So expenses, the cost of living, and, and that's something the elderly people are having to deal with too. Mm -hmm. And we're just looking at the inflation eating us alive. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I know that the governor um, has, uh, has, I don't want to say an agenda, a plan mm -hmm. where he's going to put our taxpayer dollars back in our budget, he said uh, in, that. in our pockets. He said that, yeah. And um, so that'll be great. That will help with those sure gas costs. Yeah, sure it will. So. And you know, we still have people in Copper Hill, Tennessee who drive to Jasper, Georgia mm -hmm. to work at the Royston plant. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of gas a week to mm -hmm. get to work, but of course, Royston's a great opportunity and um, they employ a lot of people. Great company to work for, so they leave Copper Hill where mm -hmm. the jobs were lost. Mm -hmm. Now, what about bringing jobs to our area? As a matter of fact, I, in, my, in my role as uh, the Executive Director of Economic Development in Fannin County, right. I just sold a building um, and this company is going to bring 50 jobs to the area. That's awesome. That's Their awesome. compensation package will allow that if if there are not there's not a workforce, uh, and there will be in Fannin County that people can afford to drive mm -hmm. to Fannin County to work there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, they're going to have a great compensation package. What kind of company is it? They do um, medical masks, mm -hmm. medical grade masks. Mm -hmm. And the company had been in Fannin County for several years, but they bought, uh, it, someone else bought it, mm -hmm. and they bought our building and they're going to expand, and I'm just so excited about that. 50 jobs, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot of money back in the community. Yes. Yeah, that is really cool. Now, the, the college that um, Speaker brought in, mm -hmm. so excited about that. He loved that. He loved the idea that that opportunity, will that campus grow? It will grow. Mm -hmm. um, there was a $15 million dollar expansion that was just granted mm -hmm. uh, last year and um, there was a groundbreaking in September. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're just excited, we're waiting and um, waiting for that to happen. That's awesome. It's great. And, and wouldn't you rather your kids be able to go to school here at home, mm -hmm. you save mm -hmm. the money at the commute and, and they can work after college, they can work after classes. And now what about online learning? Are there some of the programs that you're involved with online learning too? At UNG, um, University of North Georgia, uh, has a lot of online cl mm -hmm. classes. But I did find out, I was, met, I was meeting with Deb Cantrell yesterday, and I did find out that they have a special ed course and an early education course mm -hmm. um, that is a four-year degree that mm -hmm. you can get right there in the University of North Georgia Blue Ridge campus right now. Wow, that is awesome. So. And special ed is one of those jobs, you take that job and you take that precious memory of those children or those students home with you every day. Mm -hmm. And what a blessing, what mm -hmm. a blessing. Yes. Wow, that's yes. awesome, that's awesome. Well, we're gonna take a commercial break and we're gonna bring you a song by somebody y'all love. And I have to apologize. He won't be on the air for about six more weeks because he's doing tracking in his studio. And he is a um, meticulous, crazy man about the music. And so, for a few weeks, you won't be able to see his face live here, but you'll get to hear his music. So here we go to Mr. Ella J. Hey. 
There's a sweet and precious mother sitting in an old rocking chair. She is looking out that open window, and on her lips this servant's prayer. Oh dear God, I'm all alone. Won't you send my children? Won't you touch their hearts and make them understand? I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family. But won't you ask the children, Lord, to visit me? It's a sad, heartbreaking, lonely picture. Of a mother just waiting to die All alone without her children Surely God will hear her prayer Oh dear God, I'm all alone Won't you send my children won't you touch their hearts and make them understand? I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family. But won't you ask the children, Lord, to visit me? I know they're busy as can be with their homes and family. But won't you ask the children, Lord, to visit me? Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug, 
or the kind to climb. Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. And we want to talk a little bit about Bible verses because I brought you something. I told you that my sister always told me, be still and let God work. Well, my dear, dear friend, Selena, who passed away from pancreatic cancer, gave me this book, Be Still, Seeking Amazing Grace Within the Mess Life Throws at Us. Well, life kind of threw a mess at you. But this morning, you shared something with me. Can you share that with our audience? Yes, it is ironic that you brought this book to me because I was at the bank and I saw on a whiteboard, God will fight your battles. Be still. Be still. Mm -hmm. Be, Be still. still. And we're welcoming my new friend and a guy, I just, I fell in love with you and your wife both. Precious, <laughs> precious part of the McKaysville community. I ask you to come today and pray for the year 2023. Pray for Cherie. As a young widow, she's facing so much. Right. And, and I became a widow at 50, and I remember after you bury your husband, mm -hmm. there 
isn't the support team you thought you'd have because right. everybody goes back yeah. to life. Everybody is busy. Everybody has their own agenda. And you're like that one person, the one thing that killed me every single day, I would pick up the phone to call my husband. Mm -hmm. I couldn't call him. Mm -hmm. He wasn't there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's tough. It and and, and the tough. idea that she has the strength to do this and to run for a public office when she is in mourning. And right. I said, this is just amazing. So will you give so, us the honor of praying for us now? Yeah, can I share my favorite verse? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, there's like two of them. If that's, actually, it depends on what day it is, is what mm -hmm. my favorite verse mm -hmm. is. But Psalm 68, 6 uh, is a promise that uh, I believe God gives us. And uh, I think it's the, be the, the latter portion of the verse. It says that God places the lonely in families. And uh, for me, whenever I found myself uh, feeling all alone, uh, one, of the, one of my strengths is, and, and, and for us, we define family as the people we do life with. Mm -hmm. They may not share the same DNA, but it's, mm -hmm. it's the people we do life with. And mm -hmm. uh, another one is uh, Paul was writing, and he said, uh, God is faithful, who will not allow you to, to be tempted or tried beyond what you're able to stand. Mm -hmm. But with that temptation, he'll always make a way of escape. And, and what that tells me is God knows my limits. Mm -hmm. And I'll, he'll never let me face anything that he doesn't believe in me to come through. So a lot of times we think it's just about our faith in God. But God has faith in us mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm. uh, overcome every trial, every temptation that, he, that, that we face. And if, if we couldn't make it through it, he wouldn't let us face it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. whenever I find myself in, in really difficult times, I, I, uh, and I, and I think I'm at the end of my rope. I, I, I remember, hey, God knows where my, the real end of my rope is. Mm -hmm. And if, I, if I'm still in the fight, then that means he thinks I still have some fight left in me. <laughs> so anyway, has got that's plenty of fight two left of, in her. Yeah, I've got a lot of fight. <laughs> okay, here we go. Father, I thank you so much for, um, for your plan. I thank you, Lord, that it is more important to trust your heart than it is to know your plan. God, I ask, Lord, that you would just... Uh, you would bless this year in, in every endeavor that it brings. God, you know uh, how our state and our community is hurting. You know it, it takes godly, wise people standing up for, for, for their values to make a difference. Lord, I pray that, uh, that this year, Father, is a, is a year of fruitfulness. It's a, a year of fruition. It's a year of harvest. Um, God, we know that you fight our battles. You told Moses... And the children of Israel in, in Exodus 14, 13, 14, Father, Lord, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That the enemies that have been pursuing you, you'll not face them again. God, I thank you, Lord, that, that you are, that you're faithful, God. And Lord, that you have faith in us to, to meet any obstacle, any trial, any, tr any test that comes our way. God, teach us to lean in and listen to your heart. Father, more than anything, Lord, I, I pray that you would let us, your sons and daughters, sit on your lap and let us lean in and listen to how your heart beats for, beats for us. Give us wisdom to see past the, the symptoms uh, of, of what's going on in our, in our world today, Father, in our society. Let us see the root cause. And God, let us be a part of the solution so that all may come to know you and so that all will, all will understand your love and your peace that you have for us. In your name, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You know, one of the things I wanted to ask you, because I know what I, what I felt as a young widow, were you shocked? Because when we were talking about doing the um, debate that was done here, I didn't even know there were that many candidates running against you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, she's the only female in a field of five. Mm -hmm. Did that kind of blow your mind and and were there people that you were surprised were running and and did you did it throw a kink and did you go oh didn't see that one coming mm -hmm. um i thought that there would be a couple mm -hmm. i had no idea i had heard one of them had always said if speaker david ralston mm -hmm. wasn't there he would mm -hmm. run but but to have five people in that field mm -hmm. in this community of a hundred thousand well not even that with what about 85,000 people mm -hmm. live in Dawson, mm -hmm. uh, Dawson, Fannin, and Gilmer. Yes. Yeah. So yes. I was shocked. But, mm -hmm. but anyway, and it takes a lot to throw your name in there and do it. It does. Yeah. So everybody tried, and we're now to a runoff. Mm -hmm. And it's time. It's it time. Is. It's time. It is. Uh, it's been um, 
because I am not a politician. No. Um, I am, um, but, but I did learn from the best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, it, it, it has been a lot mm -hmm. to be in a campaign for two months, uh, especially on the heels of me burying the love, that, love of my life. Right, right. Um, so it is time. Yeah, it it's is, time. it is, it is time. And, and we think about, um, you know, we, we talked about the mental health, we talked about jobs, and I would love for us to just send out a welcome to North Georgia to every business mm -hmm. who wants to relocate. If you think, I mean, we, we totaled up, we have over 100,000 people in the areas that we serve. If we could get new business into our community and new jobs and, you know, if you're working in Atlanta, if you're working in Marietta and mm -hmm. you've been up here to visit, why not come and, and be in over the development of Fannin County, you are that go-to person. Mm -hmm where if people are looking for an opportunity to grow their business, mm -hmm. come to Gilmer County, come to Fannin County, come yes. to Dawson County, and, and bring your business and bring your ideas. And, and you know what they, they get out of this? The greatest life <laughs> in the world. That's right. We have, we have low right. crime. We have, you know, our population has grown, but it's been a managed growth. Housing is one of the things we're still in trouble with because we still don't have enough housing in certain price points and so we're still looking trying to figure out how we can but at the same time you can ride through these mountains and there are thousands of acres that have never been developed mm -hmm. we can do it you know there are ways to bring more homes but that's one of the things we find a lot of people will come and visit and say well we spent two days up there looking for homes we can't find anything in our price range mm -hmm. so there are still some issues to deal with but, but I think bringing jobs in here, fun jobs, you know, interesting jobs, um, just just a, a great, because is there a better place to live? Nowhere. Nowhere. <laughs> Nowhere. It's a little piece of heaven. It That's right. It's a little piece of heaven. It you is. think that God was playing a joke on you when he brought y'all to McCaseville? Cause <laughs> no, you're like, <laughs> I thought he was, telling, he was playing a joke on me when, I t when he told me I couldn't come okay. 12 years ago. I <laughs> uh, had no idea he was going to come full circle and we'd end up right where we where our hearts want it to be. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. It is just, and, and we are in an area now, we've grown a lot, but we still have some of the most amazing old timers yep. here. We and do. that's my favorite thing, is to get out and spend time with some of the old guys who remember, yep. they remember those jobs in the copper mines. They remember when Blue Ridge was a red light, you know, mm -hmm. had one red light. Mm -hmm. Now we have all this growth. But they remember and they have fond memories of that. And we want to preserve that. And I said, if I were your campaign manager, it would be preserving the past and embracing the future. Mm -hmm. Because we have to, it's so important to preserve the past. It is. Very, very important to do that. But also to, to embrace the future and to bring those new jobs and new opportunity and new schools. And, and you know, what do your children do? What are they involved in? So my daughter, um, works for the Crisis Network Center in mm -hmm. Fannin County. Mm -hmm. She has a heart of service. Mm -hmm. And my son owns uh, Bradburn's Towing here in, in mm -hmm. Gilmer County. In Gilmer County, yep. And yep. Uh, one, both of them are, are two of the hardest working people that I know. And the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So they <laughs> learned that. They learned, they learned that. You know, we are so fortunate that we have an opportunity with, um, with growth, with um, the stability of the area. Because even though a lot of areas were hit hard yeah. in the crisis of real estate, we haven't been hit that hard. Mm -hmm. We still have people looking every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's because we offer this great lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. And it's important to you to maintain that lifestyle. It is. You know, that's that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Live, work, and play. That's our, our yeah. mo motto. Well, that's I did what a, we want for our families. I have a real estate sign that says, live, work, and play in LA. And that's exactly yes. what my real estate sign says. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have another one that says, your heart is in the mountains, your home should be too. Mm. And I love that one. I like mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. I like that yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, when you get into the arena of, okay, this is 2023, one of the most important things. We've talked about mental health. We've talked about education. Family lifestyles. And the other mm -hmm. day, I don't know if you got to see the program. I had three teenagers from here in Gilmer County and they're in the leadership 
um, program at Gilmer High School. Really smart kids. One of them, he was sitting right over here and he made me a nervous wreck. That boy used words I've never even heard. And I was going, what are you talking about? But they are the next generation. Mm -hmm. And they're so smart and they care so much. And one of them that was sitting right here, she likes cornbread and fried taters and uh, pinto beans. I loved her. She was raised right. She was raised right. Yeah. And then the other one is a little genius from Florida. And then the other one is, I think he was from... Um, way up north somewhere, but in Wisconsin. But it was so weird to have this blended group of teenagers mm -hmm. who will be carrying the torch. Mm -hmm. So it's important for our government to give them opportunities. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. so important to give them opportunities from a good basis of your high school to um, a program that you can afford to go to college, even if it's mm -hmm. online or you know whatever you wanna do to pursue that American dream. Yes, I agree. Very, very um, important. That is our future. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the investment in our children um, is exactly where we should be. Absolutely. The elderly and the younger. Yes. Those are the two generations that I think mm -hmm. we really should focus on all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking about the uh, elderly lady I told you about earlier. There's no emergency number to call to get help. No. I have been trying and trying and trying to get her on Medicaid, and it's a long, long road. Mm -hmm. And that's scary to me, because that means that elderly people can get homeless. Today, right before I met with you, I was on the phone about a homeless shelter in Cartersville where I may have to put her. Mm -hmm. And I thought, are you serious? That's the best we can do yeah. in the state of Georgia? So it made me sad. And I said, that's why it's important to me that whoever, whatever, is at the Capitol, they better get to work on elderly, mm -hmm. elderly help mm -hmm. and, and funding and not taking all this time. And, and you know, we were talking about the nursing homes, how you said they don't get their funding like they should. Mm -hmm. They don't get reimbursed, so how can they operate a business in a profitable manner? Do you want to open a business that you can't get paid? and you're housing all these old people and you're feeding all these old people and you're waiting and waiting and waiting on your money to come. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. They can't keep the doors open like that. No, no, no. And it's so important. I think one of the ones I checked with was Pruitt Healthcare and they have facilities all over North Georgia. But at the same time, you have to have funding. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's scary. And today I was really scared because when I get a call that says you got to bring us twelve hundred more dollars, and I'm like, I don't have twelve hundred more dollars. She doesn't have another penny. There's no money. What are we going to do? And so I make a call, and they said, Well, there is a homeless shelter in Cartersville, and I'm like, Really? You want to be seventy-seven years old, and you want to go to a homeless shelter? Are you kidding me? So, so those are things that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Need to be addressed. Can we go over some of the things that y'all accomplished last year? Sure. Um, so. David was instrumental in the Highway 5 Blue Ridge um, to McKaysville expansion. Uh, millions of dollars in infrastructure improvements. He has helped Mineral Springs on two different occasions and they are needing help again. Mm -hmm. And I would plan to try to help them. Yeah. Um, They're so, so important to the community. Yes, so important. Yes. Um, someone talked to me about Burnt Mountain Center. Oh, Burnt Mountain um, Center needs help. Yes. yes desperately. Yes. Yeah. Um, so David was instrumental in um, securing hundreds of thousands of dollars in search and rescue uh, equipment. Uh, the McKaysville City Park, the Fannin County Library, which I think they're going to break ground just any time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he was instrumental in getting Fannin County named as the Trout Capital of Georgia. And those are just a few of the things, and that was in Fannin County. Uh, mm -hmm. He helped with Lower Cartagena Bridge here in, in Gilmer County, the cannery, um, the city park here, Clear Creek Bald Fields, and uh, just recently, $500,000 in um, money for water and sewer here, right here in Gilmer County. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because you're sitting here saying, David did, David did, David did. Do you know who David was working with when he did it? Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, and, and so give yourself some credit for all of that because you were involved in every one of those programs. I was. You were involved in every single one of those programs and you saw it come to be. Mm -hmm. and, and as a pastor, you know that the youth, truly, yeah. 
that that is where we need so much help yeah. whether it be recreation or whether it need to be you know you, you think about kids who have mental issues who never get addressed right. and your wife sees that as a teacher because when you see a kid who is withdrawn and quiet absolutely two things are happening either their parents are getting a divorce and they're fighting at home and the yep. kids dealing with that or the kids are in a family that is dealing with drugs I've right. talked to kids and said, what is going on with you? Well, my daddy's a drug dealer and they always, we have to move around three o'clock every time we have to move in the middle of the night because mm. my daddy's afraid he's gonna get caught again. Yeah. That's what kids are dealing with today. I've seen that up close and personal. I, and I think one of, the, one of the greatest tragedies right now of, uh, of our culture and our society is this idea of generational gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, I, hate, I hate that term. Mm -hmm. It's a, some marketing, gen Generation X, Generation Z, the boomers, builders, those were marketing ideas that should have never really uh, been used to, to bring division. I agree with you. I think one of the greatest things that we can do is put a, a, a young man's hand in, in the hand of an of a older businessman and, and mm -hmm. mentorships mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. erasing, erasing this, this idea of uh, that there's something different about you and and this other person and mm -hmm. and and erasing that gap. I, I believe that uh, I believe apprenticeships and and internships is is one of the things uh, one of the ways of the future for our community. Um, yes, our kids are uh, they're they are uh, they're the ones that's going to be running the show down the road, but they're making an impact now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we don't when we don't allow an opportunity for them to sit at the table and to feel valued. Uh, they find other they find other avenues. They find other ways to honestly get in get into mischief. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so. Something to keep them busy. Absolutely. And I want you to get to meet these kids. They're going to come back during the winter break and be on the show with oh, me I'd again love to. because they just I was like, wow, they're so smart and they're so together. And they're and that's the future. Right. That's mm -hmm. the future. You know. We have to take care of that generation that's going to be leaving us soon. Yeah. But then again, we have to prepare and, and prep those younger ones. And so it's important. Now, we've only got a few minutes left. I told you the hour would go quickly and we wouldn't get to cover everything. Is there anything that we've missed that you want to talk about? I would love um, to remind everybody that early voting begins January 23rd through January 27th. Mm -hmm. Election day is January 31st. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to tell you that um, you can trust me, and if I give you my word, you can take that to the bank. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So give me an opportunity uh, to do the things that I love to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be so honored to represent um, the, the constituency of Gilmer, Fannin, and Dawson counties. Right. And, and thank you for having me and here. And continue doing the job that you've been yes. doing for all these years. Yes. And I'll just throw that out yes. at you. And I'm going to invite each and every one of you, all our viewers, come down to McKaysville tomorrow night yes. at 5.30. We're going to be at the Burrow Restaurant. Burrow Burrow. Burrow Burrow yes. Restaurant right there on the river where we used to be at the Nifty 50 <laughs> when we actually started the community meal that to date has served over 40,000 meals wow. to people who couldn't afford food. And we were instrumental in doing that and it was because one homeless person came and asked a dear friend, do you have anything I can do for food? Now this happened 14 years ago in McKaysville, Georgia. Wow. And during the next few years, we prepared and served over 40,000 meals to people and we did it for $1 each. And what happened with that program was people would come in and hand me $100 and say, you can feed everybody who can't afford to eat. Isn't that amazing? It's yes. amazing what happens when yes. our community comes together. Our community yes. together. Our yes. community together. And it's great that you're having this event tomorrow night where we started the homeless meal. Yes. So that's awesome. Yes. And again, it is right on the river, right by that beautiful bridge. Come out and have some photo opportunities. Spend some time. It begins at 530. Yes. And I'm going to challenge all of y'all to come by because I'd love to give y'all a hug. That's one thing about serving the communities from Ball Ground to Turtle Town. You get to see me all the time. I don't ever get to see y'all. So come out and visit with us, and that'll be really, really neat. And again, it's 530 to 7. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, at Burra Burra. And if they have questions, if they have concerns, can we give your phone number? Yes. Give I me your phone I, number. My phone number is 706-633-7775.
and I want you to know that every vote counts in this election. Mm -hmm. Every vote. Please go vote. Go vote. Go vote <laughs> and, and, and vote. And again, I live in Cherokee County. All I can do is sit here and do what I do. Um, because I did respect her husband so much and I, I looked to him and when I couldn't have him on the end of this year, obviously, um, I thought, who's going to take his place? And Rick Jaspers and I sat here and, and talked and he said, you're right, I can't fill his shoes. And I said, but I know who can and I believe you can and I believe you will. So, thank you. Yay, yay. Thank you. All right, y'all, as the weekends, it's going to be, uh, we're going to declare this a beautiful weekend with blue skies. Let's declare it. Now, I have somebody, Bill, will you slide over here right quick and come right behind me? We have a surprise guest who came in today, and he's been in the audience a while, and we want to invite you to come to Harbor Ministries in McKaysville, where you're going to be singing when? Uh, Sunday after next. All right, Sunday after next. Look at, how do we get you in here? There you go. <laughs> There you go. This is my buddy. This is my longtime co-host, Bill Senior, and he is going to be up at Harbor Ministries in McKaysville singing and uh, with our dear, dear friend Denise and Danny Caldwell. Won't be dancing, though, just singing. Yeah, he'll just be singing <laughs> because, after all, it is sort of a Baptist church, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it is, it is. Now, Mike, Mike, singing, Mike dance church. Church. Come That's on, right. dance at our church. That's I was right. thinking it. <laughs> now, can you invite people up to the... Uh, uh, your daughter's place. Oh, it's the Biblical Times Theater at Pigeon Forge. They reopen again probably in March or April. So. And you are also in that performance well, mode. Well, the Christmas part. I was yes. Yes, yeah. he was the mean one. Can you all <laughs> imagine that? My sweet Bill being the mean one. So thank you for coming by here You're today. Welcome. I'm so glad you came. Surprise, surprise. And we want to remind you all, uh, you know, once we come off the air here, everything goes to YouTube and you can archive, you can save, you can share. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's just Sherry Martin, C-H-E-R-I-E. M-A-R-T-I-N, or the little one that I put all my little blippets in is Heart of the Home, Sherry Martin. So, so sign up and subscribe to both of those, and you'll get to see any and all the programs we've done. You'll even get to see when Bill was being mean to me, because we've got some programs on there that are older and dirt. Well, she paid him to do it. <laughs> she paid him to do it. Yeah, I did. And people would say, I can't believe he's so mean to you. And I said, well, it's fun, y'all. It's fun. It is fun, and, and our life here has been so amazing because of you, because of each and every one of you, and I want to challenge you to get out today, do something for somebody else. Think of something just simple, easy that you can do will bless somebody, and uh, in turn, it will bless you how many times? Many, many, many times over. Many, many, <laughs> many times over. Can't and uh, Can't count it. We're going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet, only at ETC. Bye, y'all.